Today, Bitcoin tumbles in value a day after the Fed hikes interest rates. FTX wants to raise a billion dollars to buy up more crypto businesses. And we talked to Kraken's incoming CEO, Dave Ripley, to hear his vision for the crypto exchange. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Crypto price is taking a dive this morning after the Fed raised interest rates and Chair Jay Powell reiterated the central bank's plan to keep raising them until inflation is under control. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin slipped below $19,000, Ethereum fell to $1,200, and Polygon traded at around 73 cents. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. First, FTX is in talks with investors to raise up to $1 billion in new funding, which would keep the company's valuation at about $32 billion. This, according to people with knowledge of the confidential discussions, who also said that the terms could change since negotiations are ongoing. The sources say that some of that new capital, on top of a $400 million round from January, would help fuel more deal making. So you might remember that two months ago, FTX signed a deal that gives the company the option to buy lender BlockFi, and it's in talks to take over South Korean crypto exchange BitHub. Now, we reached out to FTX and a spokesperson declined to comment. The Sam Bankman-Fried's conglomerate has tried to bill itself as crypto savior, swooping in to buy distressed assets at a discount, all while rivals have been hit hard by this year's so-called crypto winter. Next, Binance is hiring big-name former government officials to set up a global advisory board. Those names include former Obama White House advisor David Plouffe and David Wright, a former secretary general of the International Organization of Securities Commissions, among nine others. Now, according to a news release, former U.S. Senate Finance Committee chairman and ambassador to China Max Baucus will lead the team. The board's goal is to advise the world's largest crypto exchange by trading volume on some of the most complex regulatory issues facing the industry as it quickly evolves. In a statement, Binance founder and CEO Chengpeng Zhao said, quote, we're supercharging our ability to manage regulatory complexity by tapping into the highest level of expertise available anywhere in the world through the new advisory board. Last, Jesse Powell, the CEO of crypto exchange Kraken, is stepping down. The co-founder will be replaced by the company's chief operating officer, Dave Ripley. Ripley's new role comes after the company spent a year conducting an external search looking for Powell's replacement. The New York Times reported in June that Powell faced employee backlash after he posted about race and gender in the company's Slack channels. He also reportedly made clear the company's libertarian values and said employees who disagreed with the policy could leave. Powell isn't leaving Kraken altogether, though. He'll stay on as chairman, where he will focus on industry advocacy and innovation. So for our main story of the day, in the wake of this C-suite change, I spoke with the new CEO to discuss his plans for the company. Kraken says that the search for a new CEO has been going on for a year. They've been looking at internal and external candidates. Why now and why you? We did uh, uh, go through a process, um, you know, as, as, as you mentioned, uh, for a year now looking for, you know, across various different candidates. I was, of course, one of those candidates um, that was part of the process. We, um, you know, there's a number of different reasons. One is, is really, you know, Jesse, he's, you know, done an enormous amount of, um, of things for, for the crypto industry generally and for, for Kraken, of course, building it to a 3,000 person uh, plus company. And he's, you know, he's ready to move up, uh, we're referring it uh, as we're referring to it, um, to a chairman role. Um, and so uh, that, you know, of course, leaves open a, a, you know, an incredibly important role for the company, which, you know, after some time, we, uh, myself and the board and, and Jesse all agreed this was the right path. So you mentioned that Jesse is indeed staying on as chairman. He's still in the role of CEO until you find your replacement. That being said, it's no secret that he has been, Jesse has been at the center of multiple company-related controversies this year. Some employees have explicitly said that they've left the exchange because of inflammatory messages and comments that he's made. What culture do you plan to bring to the team and what steps, if any, are being taken now to address the discord? We did a fantastic job articulating our mission, our values, our culture. We've, you know, shared that even externally now. And, uh, you know, frankly, internally, it's been like a resounding success. Um, we have an incredibly enthused set of uh, Krakenites, as we refer to our team members, 3,000 plus. Um, we just completed our, our kind of annual engagement survey. And, I mean, across the board, um, above industry uh, level rankings across the board. So we certainly don't view it as a, as a controversy by any means. Um, we view it as a, um, 
you know, just a, a really fantastic step and we're really set up for, uh, for the future to, to execute on our mission. Okay. But the, I mean, there are some people who, who don't, who chose to leave the company because of uh, some of the divisive comments that were made. Do you want to at all comment on what's been going on the last few months or those employee departures? No doubt. I think it was, you know, a fraction of a percent of people that were at Kraken disagree. You know, that was our objective to make sure that everyone, you know, was in fact aligned with our mission and our culture. And we wanted to, you know, provide them a, a path to find a, a place that, you know, was, was best for them. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that you don't plan to make any changes to the company culture. With regard to mission and culture, zero. I mean, it is identical. This culture that we have, you know, based as we referred to on, on crypto values, libertarian values, this is, you know, Jesse and I are, are in lockstep. I was, you know, a co-author of, of all of these um, all of these various different pieces. And so that is that it needs to be steadfast through this transition. And that was, you know, absolutely something that we we all agree is is critical. It's it's the most important thing we have to our success. So Kraken was one of the first major exchanges where investors could buy and sell digital assets. Coinbase has come up the ranks since then. Brian Armstrong spent a lot of time in Washington with lawmakers. Kraken, not so much. Some see the exchange as going its own way. Do you think that that's a fair assessment? Why or why not? We're actually in Washington. Um, and we have maybe more recently built out a policy team over the past like nine months. Um, that is a half dozen team members. And we're you know increasingly more and more active across lawmakers, regulators, um, you know, looking uh, very much to, to help, um, you know, kind of chart the path for crypto across the United States, Europe, and, and geographies beyond that. So we're definitely active. I think just generally Kraken has been somewhat less public from a you know, marketing standpoint, you know, irrespective of, of policy and regulatory. Um, and so that's one thing that actually I think you'll see change for Kraken going forward. We are looking to invest um, significantly in, in marketing as we move forward. A lot of firms and exchanges say they would welcome greater clarity on crypto regulation. The White House put out a framework on Friday with their suggestions for how to regulate digital assets. There are competing bills on Capitol Hill, but as of now, it still feels like we're in this wait and see mode when it comes to getting hard and fast rules on crypto in the U.S. In the meantime, regulation by enforcement by the SEC appears to be the new norm. What's your take on where regulation is headed here in the U.S.? We don't think, I don't think anyone in, you know, fintech, crypto, financial services broadly sees, you know, regulation by enforcement without any clarity as a sensible path. Um, it, you know, was damaging to businesses, consumers and, and the like. And so, yeah, we're, we're very much, um, we're frankly very much supportive of, you know, moving towards clarity. If, if um, you know, if there's, if there's a need for any new regulations, let's make sure we're clear on what they are. In terms of regulation, the Southern District of New York is fast becoming this arbiter of crypto policy here in the U.S. We've got three major bankruptcies and the infamous Ripple SEC lawsuit happening there. What are your thoughts on SDNY judges get setting precedent in crypto policy? Presumably it'll happen, right? I mean, you know, the 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 court cases that, that get brought forward, you know, obviously do do carry weight. They, you know, do set precedent in many, many different ways. You know, we think um, you know, as I said before, I mean, it's ideal that, you know, the regulations do provide clarity such that, you know, we're not left to kind of like, you know, an uncertain timeline when, you know, various different court cases will, you know, play out to provide probably, you know, suboptimal clarity in the end anyways. So reports came out in July saying that Kraken was being investigated by Treasury for allegedly allowing Iranian users onto the platform. This would be a violation of international sanctions against the Iranian regime. New York Times reported that the department is expected to fine Kraken. Do you have any comment on this? We, of course, you know, are just unable to like comment on like any details of anything active that isn't is in public. I mean, there are you know a number of different things where we you know work with regulators across the globe licenses, a number of different things. But um, yeah, I mean, as far as, as far as this goes, there's, you know, nothing, nothing out there at this point to, uh, you know, that is you know, really just speculation. So we're in the midst of crypto winter. What are your plans for weathering the bear market? You know, we're no, we're no strangers to the bear markets. You know, this is the, the third bear market for, for myself and crypto. And, uh, you know, I think Kraken's probably fourth. Um, they, you know, Frankly, the, the the earlier bear markets that we endured were quite challenging, and 
you know, now at this point, we're built for this. And it's an opportunity for us to build, to scale, to, you know, acquire, you know, great talent to the company. Um, so we're really excited about um, the opportunity that lies ahead. But would you consider an IPO? Robinhood and Coinbase, both are public. Is it something that might be in the cards for you? Yeah. So, I mean, th these are always options out there uh, for Kraken. And so, you know, we're, of course, always evaluating all the various different paths to, you know, to fundraising, um, you know, public being one of them, but no, no, di nothing definitive on that front for us. So the regulation that we're likely to get first is probably going to be something that is pegged to the stable coin space. How do you operate in a non-regulated environment? What are you doing to protect customers, for example? You know, regulatory clarity or not, laws, um, you know, with specificity towards crypto or not, we invest heavily in this space. You know, so we have a, a legal team of 50 plus. We have a compliance team of nearly 300 and they're working incredibly hard. Um, they're leading the way on helping assess what all, all of these new technologies mean for existing laws and, and regulations, and frankly, are at the forefront of this. So we, um, much the same as some of our peers, are investing heavily in this, in this area, um, regardless. Okay, one last thing. Masari's main net conference is happening in New York, and I had the chance to speak with QuickNode's co-CEO about the company's new blockchain infrastructure marketplace. So you've described the marketplace as the app store for the blockchain. Describe what this product does and how it makes the lives of developers easier. So the QuickNode marketplace is the easiest way to level up your infra. Like you said, it's basically the app store for blockchain web three. It allows QuickNode users to browse and utilize third-party Web3 APIs and services, um, giving developers a single place to discover new tools, add-ons, products, um, and just general enhancements to enrich and enhance whatever they're building. And on the flip side, it allows blockchain tool developers a platform to reach the over 100,000 users currently on the QuickNode platform. So what are the biggest problems for developers right now, the biggest barriers, and does the marketplace fix that? Does it just augment their experience? Definitely augments the experience. So there are a number of tools um, and, and requests that our customers have been approaching us with, and we know that we can't build all of them. Um, there's just not enough time. So what we've done is enabled uh, an API so that they can connect their APIs and their services to. So with a single click, developers can then get access to things like gas price APIs, uh, single click NFT minting, um, NFT protection and transaction protection. Um, and this goes to our launch partners like Block Native, Crossmint, uh, Flashbots, Lua Base, uh, Go Plus Security, and several others. So with respect to your business, is the downturn, this crypto winter affecting the work that you're doing? Um, absolutely, absolutely not. I, like I mentioned earlier, we're, we're still seeing um, a lot of interest. Uh, we're seeing companies like Web Web two native companies uh, come to a company like QuickNode um, and asking for guidance. How do they enter the space? How do they create these certain programs? Whether they be NFT loyalty programs or how do they um, how do they participate in DeFi? And and a lot of that stuff really um, has to do with how, how the government views um, a number of these things. So uh, policymakers and guidance around how these large uh, organizations can approach uh, these new these new industries in these new spaces, that's that's still up in the air. But again, you know we're, we're seeing Web3 and blockchain being talked about in Congress. This simply didn't happen uh, three years ago. So there is definitely progress. And I want to the sentiment is definitely positive still. To watch that full interview, head over to cnbc.com slash crypto world. That's it for today, but we will see you again tomorrow.